Today I thought it'd be fun if we styled a toggle component with just HTML and CSS. Just gonna start. Let's jump into the code. You'll notice I have a blank HTML document, very bare bones, with just a header and a bot, a header, a header and a body. Um, <laughs> with a head and a body. You'll notice I have a bare bones HTML page with a head and a body. And we're going to stub out our HTML and then add our CSS to style that switch component. When you think about it, a toggle is just a checkbox. It has the same functionality. It's either on or it's off. Uh, same with a toggle. It's either on or it's off. So we can use that component because it's an HTML native component. We can take advantage of that and the accessibility properties uh, that it gives us. So I'm going to say input type is checkbox. I'm going to give it a name called toggle and a class called toggle. A value of yes and say that by default it is checked. Then I want to have a span, a class of yes, and a, another span with a class of no. So these are the items that are going to go on either side of our switch. And then we need our switch itself. And I'm just going to put a non-breaking space inside. So if I give this a save and a refresh, you'll notice that I have all the elements so far. Now, if I'm over here clicking, you'll notice nothing happens to that checkbox when I click on no. If I have a label, actually wrap all of these items, hit save and refresh. Now, just out of the box, I can click on no and that checkbox is checking and unchecking, which is awesome. Now, as we start to get into the styles, let's start with the switch itself. So I'm gonna give it a background of DDD, which is a light gray. I'm gonna say border radius is 20 pixels. I'm gonna say margin is zero, 10 pixels. So this is just saying the top and the bottom is zero and the left and right is 10 pixels. This will give it some spacing from the yes and no. I'm going to give this a height of 20 pixels and a width of 50 pixels. So if I hit save and refresh, you'll notice there's the switch itself. Uh, not exactly 50 pixels. So if I give this a display of block, it should help whip it into shape. The only thing is now it's appearing on its own line, not what we wanted. If I change this to inline block, the nice thing is it inherits some of the properties that a block has. It respects the width and height property of a block, but it allows your content to display in line. Let's move on to the actual flipper. So I'm gonna say switch after. Now in CSS, there are two pseudo elements. There's a before and an after. They do exactly what you think they would do. A before will inject content before and a after will inject content after the tag that you're targeting. In our case, we want our little circle to be injected after the pill that we've just created. So I'm going to say width is 15 pixels, height is 15 pixels, background is magenta, border, I want it to be a circle, so I'm gonna say border radius is 50%. I'm gonna say display block, and you'll notice that nothing happens. That's because when you're using pseudo elements, you have to use this content property. We don't actually have content, so we'll say blank. Now you'll notice it injected our little circle after the pill. Now we need to position that so it appears within the pill. So I'm going to give it a position of absolute, left of three pixels, top of three pixels, and hit save and refresh. And you'll notice that it jumped up here into the corner. The important thing to remember with CSS is that position is always relative. In this case, position absolute is relative to the parent container. In our case, switch has no positioning. So it's relative to the entire page. So went top three pixels, left three pixels. But if we add a position of relative to the parent, you'll notice that it is going to suddenly be relative to this element and our ball will jump into the container like we want it, which is perfect. Next, let's work on that checkbox. Ultimately, it would just be great if it would disappear or disappear. <laughs> the easiest thing to do is gonna say input type checkbox. We're targeting that checkbox and display none and it's gone. The only problem is that for someone using a screen reader, it's gone for them too. And this content might not mean anything to them. We still want them to be able to use the website the way that we intended. There's a workaround for this. It takes a few more lines of code, but I believe it's worth it. So we're gonna give this a height of one pixel and a width of one pixel and then say overflow hidden. 
So anything outside that will disappear. I give that a save and a refresh. You'll notice that our checkbox is still there, but it's only occupying that one by one space. That's why it got knocked down. So here I'm going to change the positioning and just knock it off the page. So I can say top is negative, whatever that number is. And we're going to say left is auto. So there's some flexibility in how it adjusts left. Let's give this a position of relative and hit refresh. You'll notice it's gone, but it's still occupying that space. So if we change this to absolute, absolute will pull it out of the DOM and move it. So you'll notice everything shifted over the way that we wanted. Let's start to style this if the default is no. So I'm going to say span color black. So each of our yes and our no are going to be black by default and we want them to have a font weight of bold. Let's save that and hit refresh. Perfect. Just the way that we intended. Let's start styling those labels. So by default we want these to have a font weight of bold. Now we need to start targeting this yes or no depending on the checkbox. I'm actually gonna hide this for right now so that you can see what is happening with this, whether it's yes or no, it might help a little bit. Let's talk about the logic here. If this is checked yes, which it is by default, we want this yes to be styled differently. We want it to have that magenta color and we want the circle to appear on the left side, which it does by default. If it's no, we want the same things to apply to the no. We can do that by targeting our checkbox and when it is checked, uh, we wanna get to that yes. Since these things are all siblings of each other, we can target them in CSS using the tilde. So if you look on your keyboard, it's right above the back tick, right next to that one. You don't use it very often. We can say tilde, so if it's a sibling of the checkbox, and we want to target our yes. I'm going to say, give it a color of magenta. So now let's give this a refresh. You'll notice our yes is now styled. If I click it, it goes back to black. Perfect. So now let's do the same thing for our no. Save and refresh. You'll notice now it's both. We need this to be a not checked. Well, there's not a not checked option, but there is a not property. So if I do this and say it's not checked and hit refresh, now it's toggling the colors. So now we want our circle to move over when no is selected. So I'm gonna come down here and say when no, and I'm gonna target the, when it's not checked, I'm gonna target the switch and say after. We want it to be right three pixels, and I'm gonna make left auto. If I hit save and refresh, you'll notice it goes over. Perfect. The only thing left is to uncomment our code and at the very top, I'm going to say toggle. So I'm targeting this label here. We'll add a class of toggle to. I'm gonna to say cursor pointer. And what this does is when you hover over our toggle, we now have a pointer cursor. Again, the code is on GitHub. If you'd like to download it and use it and tweak it and play with it, do whatever you want. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button below to be notified when I release more videos about web design and development. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications once those videos are released. Until then, keep coding.